Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. It is now March 4th of 2024, and given that all divisions at the Walt Disney Company are beginning to crumble as we speak, and I like to always point this out that I believe the two worst functioning divisions over at Walt Disney are Lucasfilm and Marvel Studios for several reasons due to the lack of leadership skills by both Kevin Feige and Kathleen Kennedy and also due to the fact that they are both very good friends and they really bounce you know ideas back and forth about Star Wars and Marvel that's only hurting each brand year by year. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. So one thing about Bob Iger is that we know that he is definitely and absolutely by far the worst CEO of all time over at Disney. I think that he definitely outperforms Bob Chapek, and we all knew that Bob Chapek was the fall guy, right? We all sensed that Bob Iger was only semi-retired back a couple of years ago before he returned to really bring Disney Star Wars and Marvel Star Wars or whatever have you, any of the divisions, all right? Uh, Pixar, Walt Disney Animation Studios, etc., etc. Everything has hit rock bottom. Now, what's interesting about all of this has a lot to do with the whole Sean Bailey situation and the firing of the Disney president. Now, one thing about this is that we know that Bob Iger is making one bad call after the other. This has been an ongoing issue now for the past seven to eight months, where it has become quite a trend and quite, you know, a smooth ride for Bob Iger to drive Disney into the ground, basically is what it boils down to. Now, interestingly enough, on top of all of this, with all divisions at Disney endlessly failing and falling into a downward spiral due to Bob Iger's lack of leadership, one major development has much to do with the recent firing of the Disney president who handles all of the live action material and what actions he is now taking against the Walt Disney Company. As it turns out, after Disney president Sean Bailey was fired and replaced by David Greenbaum and given false promises over the last three projects he would be producing, even after his firing, Bailey is already making serious legal warnings against those like Bob Iger and the rest of the board who fired him by using him as the scapegoat and the one to blame for all the 2023 box office failures and PR decisions, even of course before having all these films meet their end at the box office. One shocking update to this entire situation is that the main reason why Bailey is already taking legal action and warning Disney about these serious moves is that it was due to the fact that Sean was promised to produce Tron 3, the Pirates of the Caribbean reboot slash remake, and Sword in the Stone. A three movie deal, so to speak, that was offered to Bailey and agreed upon if he were to be terminated at some point in time, which happened. Those agreements were rapidly changed by Iger once he was fired and broke certain aspects of Bailey's contract, which is actually causing him to head into these legal warnings against Iger and the rest of the board. The other part of this drama is that Sean was also promised by Iger that the project offered would be shifting away from any kind of an agenda to add a refresh of sorts to the Walt Disney Company for Tron 3, Pirate 6, and Sword in the Stone. The promise made by Iger turns out it was nothing more than a lie, not a big shocker there, and is full of agenda-driven strategies in the films again, something that Bailey doesn't want to be blamed for and reportedly suspects he is being used as a final hurrah for being used as a scapegoat once more for these three remakes, so to speak. Already Disney took away both Pirate 6, 6 and Sword and the Stone from Sean and actually broke his contract and is only providing him Tron 3, aka Tron Ares, which is already going to basically undo everything that was done in Tron Legacy, which is the sequel, Tron 2. Now, which was also given under a false promise. It was promised by Iger that this film would shift away from his extreme approach for DEI, when in reality Tron 3 is set to be the most diverse and DEI-driven film in recent years by Disney that Bailey argues is going to focus away from proper storytelling and will only lead to failure. The most important thing about this and why Bailey is making legal warnings against Disney and gathering a legal team is that Iger essentially promised the Disney president several story elements for these films that would garner a guaranteed multi-billion dollar revenue stream for the next couple of years and that it would enhance his legacy at the Walt Disney Company after his termination. 
Now, already Iger and the board held an emergency meeting yet again in recent days about the structure for Pirate 6, Tron 3, and Sword in the Stone, all of which are going to break away from tradition and the source material from the originals or what was done before in the past with these movies. Already Tron 3 is considered a soft reboot, something that Bailey was also not informed about when he was terminated and only given one movie now to work on as a producer. So guys, before I move on to the big conclusion about this, the fact that Bailey was promised a if and when type of situation, you know, in his contract if he were to be terminated, which he was terminated from that overall segment of Disney, you know, that division of Disney that handles all the live action stuff, he was promised to produce three movies even after his firing and now is only being given one, but not just that, it's also another false promise that was given to Bailey that this plan or this overall deal, so to speak, was going to be a series of films, or in this case now just a singular film, that would shift away from Bob Iger's extreme take on the DEI agenda, which is now actually happening and getting thrown into that film. And that's something that Sean is not happy about, because we all know what's going to happen. He's going to be used as a scapegoat. He's going to be used as a person to point the finger at and blame why the movie failed at the box office because of this and or that. So, moving onwards, this is where it gets a little bit more intense. Now, Sean is out, of course, of Disney's live-action division for good. In the meantime, David Greenbaum is taking over immediately, who falls more in line with Iger's agenda and push for DEI in these upcoming films for the later half of the 2020s. So, this really is an interesting deal that Bailey got. Yes, he is fired slash removed from the live action division of the Walt Disney Company, but he's being given one movie to produce, Tron 3. And there's already a lot of promises that were broken with this movie, per, of course, what he was actually given by Bob Iger beforehand. Now, let me just say one thing about this. Now, the fact that Bob Iger is really feeling and sensing the walls closing in. I think that this is why he's acting so erratically to the point where you really can't put a pinpoint where Bob Iger is going as far as direction goes. You know, he's going in all different directions right now as far as, you know, business decisions and what he's talking about with the board of directors and what he's doing with the film slates and the plans for television on streaming for Disney Plus, the business models. It's all really something that's an up and down roller coaster at this point in time. And to think that Bob Iger believes or is trying to make believe to the general public that he believes that there's no concern about this company in both the short and the long term is ludicrous. It makes absolutely no sense. So overall, again, I think that this is interesting, so to speak, that Bob Iger really went the extra mile to really kind of just push Bailey and put him to the wayside, point the finger at him, break all those promises, and they're going to be shocked about what Bailey is now pretty much, you know, sprucing up against Disney. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked at all because this is all Disney's doing at its finest. So overall, you know, I would like to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys later. Yeah.